Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this video we're going to talk about the fish of a lifetime. What does that mean exactly? Not just to me, but what's it mean to you? Whenever I say those words, do you think of that GT that you've been seeing everybody catch on Instagram? Is it that elusive brook trout that you've been trying to catch or maybe land for the last two seasons in that tiny stream about a mile from your house? Is it more than just a fish? Is it an experience? Is it something you share with someone else? That's what we're going to investigate in this video. I hope you enjoy this one. Stay tuned. A fish of a lifetime. That really has just meant a lot of different things to me over the years. When I first started getting into fly fishing 30 years ago, to me it was just going to be so cool whenever I caught my first trout on a fly. I did. Then I thought, geez, what about if I tie my own fly and I catch a fish on that fly that I tied myself? It happened. Then one day I was bluegill fishing, I had a bluegill on, and this giant largemouth bass just came out of nowhere, engulfed that bluegill. I landed this just huge largemouth, I think I landed it, it was a long time ago, and to me it was like, oh my gosh, I just caught the fish of my lifetime. It was such a cool experience. And it just seemed like all these different occurrences, all these different experiences kind of led to another one. Now in 2020, I'm kind of taking a step back and trying to reflect more about what did that even mean to me? What was a fish of a lifetime? And what does that mean exactly to all of us? And most importantly, what's that mean to you too? I've been very fortunate because my wife, Heather, just loves to fly fish as well. And it's been great to kind of experience it with her. Whenever we first started fly fishing together, we would go to little brook trout streams and she would wear this cute dress and shoes that were probably not appropriate to be out fly fishing in. And we would basically just dap our flies and catch these really pretty little brook trout with a bamboo fly rod, just these classic reels. And it was a really great experience. To Heather, she never really considered that fly fishing exactly, but to me, it was just such a great moment. And kind of seeing her catch those fish, it was like, that was a fish of a lifetime for me. Now I have a son, Angelo, and I start to wonder kind of what's his experience or what are his experiences going to be like in the sport of fly fishing. And I can't wait to be there alongside him as he goes or as he transitions from just loving to run in the mud and just get completely dirty and throw sticks and stones in the water and play with his toys to actually fly fishing. And I can't wait for him to say to me one day, I finally caught a, you know, a fish on my first fly or something along those lines. That's probably going to be the moment that I'm most looking forward to. And that currently is probably my fish of a lifetime. And it's having that experience with my son in the future. 2019 was a really special year for me. I was very fortunate and able to travel all around the world. And there were different moments that really just kind of resonate still with me. I remember back in Wyoming, I was fly fishing with Harrison Hughes. He's the owner of Black Mountain Cinema and Mr. Rob Janino of the Fly Fishing Journeys podcast. You probably know Rob and I kind of hang out quite a bit. Well, the three of us were there. We were fishing with Wyoming fly fishing and we were catching nothing but rainbow trout. And I just love to catch brown trout. And I tried so hard that entire trip to catch a brown trout. And on the last day, Harrison Hughes caught this gorgeous brown trout. It was such an awesome moment. And I remember just how excited he was and how to him, that fish right there was kind of the fish of a lifetime. And I love just being there for that moment with Harrison. Harrison, if you're watching this, I can still remember that, that moment when we netted that fish and you just like let up that yell. It was such a cool moment. And then I was also fishing with them in Iceland and we had just gotten off the plane. Uh, we were on this lake and we were fishing for these ice age brown trout. And one of my first fish was a nearly 10 pound brown trout. And I remember thinking, I just got off the plane a few hours ago. I just landed this epic brown trout. My trip's already complete. That fish right there was I was holding it. Everything had just worked out so well. I was like, this is it. This is my fish of a lifetime. But I think you know, things slowly change and they're always evolving in fly fishing. As 2019 rolled on, both Heather and I turned 40. So this was kind of a, it was a milestone year for us. And I said to her, what would you like to do to celebrate your 40th birthday? And she said that she would really like to go saltwater fly fishing. 
We have done that you know, quite a bit over the years, but we've really never kind of gotten invested with a guide and kind of gone all in with that experience. So um, I reached out to Mr. Michael Mowry. He's down in Stewart, Florida. And he said, yeah, absolutely. Come on down. Let's see if we can catch some snooking and whatever else can kind of occur. So Heather and I were fishing. We were having just a really great experience. Um, she had done so well with some of her casts. And Mike said to me, hey, Tim, why don't you cast first in this location? It's a really tricky spot, maybe a little bit too windy for Heather. Let's see what happens. I swear I've been fishing there for no more than five minutes, and I land just this enormous snook. You're looking at it right now. It was just an awesome fight. Uh, Michael did a great job of kind of guiding me to help me land this fish. Uh, man, it was so incredible. And I remember thinking, gosh, this is one of the nicest saltwater fish that I've caught in a long time since I caught some mahi a few years before. And I felt guilty because this was supposed to be Heather's birthday trip. Well, you know how this story probably is going to play out. Heather's turn was up next. The wind was kind of tough and we decided it may not be the best spot for her, but she said, hey, let me make a couple more casts. She made like two more casts, hooks and lands this giant snook. It's a 33 inch snook. You're probably looking at it now. Um, the look on her face was just priceless because we had it close to the boat once. We couldn't net it. It made another run. We got it back a second time. And whenever we landed it, the three of us were just completely ecstatic. I mean, at that moment, that was my fish of a lifetime to go down there for Heather's 40th and to have her experience that moment. Just such an incredible one. Now, I was great. The next day we went tarpon fishing. I blew about six shots on tarpon. So yeah, maybe I'm now chasing something in the future, but does it really matter if I call something the fish of a lifetime? And that's really the point that I want you to start thinking about as I kind of am gonna ask you here in a moment to comment down below in the comment section, but not just talk about a fish. So this wonderful sport of fly fishing, is it all about just chasing after the fish of a lifetime? I'm not sure. In 2020, I'll be hosting a trip with Mr. Rob Janino. We are going back to Iceland. Um, I'll put a link down below. The website's iceland2020.net. But we're going back because I wanna catch a larger brown trout. Yeah, I caught that gorgeous one that you saw earlier. I caught just this incredible Arctic char, kind of that bucket list style of fish. But then I realized that in that lake with those Ice Age brown trout, a 10 pound brown isn't really considered a big one. I've heard there's 20 to 30 pound brown trout in there. So Rob and I said, hey, we're going back. We're inviting others on that trip. And if you wanna join in, or if you just want information about fly fishing in Iceland, reach out to me. But to me, that's kind of that fish that I'm also chasing. So is that my fish of a lifetime? I don't look at it like that. I just look at it as another experience I'm looking forward to having. I've already talked about kind of like that moment I wanna have with Angelo in the future. And I can even reflect on some moments that I've had with both Heather and Angelo. I remember when she caught the largest brown shark of her fly fishing career, we had this fish hooked, she got it in, she was just so happy. She wanted a picture of this fish, she was basically hugging it. I mean, it was such an incredible moment. And to me, that's really what fly fishing is all about. It's not about the fish of a lifetime. It's about those moments that exist kind of during and between those fish of a lifetime, or as we like to call them that. So now this is where you come in. You've heard me kind of talk about some of my experiences over the years, and especially in the last couple years, they've been really special moments. What's that moment or what's that fish of a lifetime that you're looking forward to having? I'd love to hear from you down below in the comment section. Just take a moment and Tell me a little bit about it. I mean, it, you may just say it's a GT, but tell me why you're looking forward to having that moment with that fish, or more importantly, are you planning on sharing that moment with somebody else? Is it you and your friend that fly fish together and you can't wait to kind of get back and have that experience with them again this year? Or is it the notion that maybe you have a fishing buddy and maybe they're no longer with us and you really would just love to have just another one day together to fish with that person? So I'm not sure what your moment is exactly. You've heard a few of mine, but I can't wait to hear from you down below in the comment section. Or as always, you can reach out to me via my email, tkamisa at gmail.com. Well, thanks ahead of time for helping me investigate this topic because it's an interesting one and I really just wanna bring a little bit more clarity to it and look at it from everybody's perspective, not just my own. Thanks for checking out my videos, which can be found at troutandfeather.com and also on my YouTube channel, which is TC Trout. Thank you ahead of time for subscribing. Thanks for all the likes and thanks for just all the wonderful comments you left in my videos over the years. 
If you have any questions or comments, as mentioned before, you can leave them down below in the comments section. You can also email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. If you're into social media, you can find Trout and Feather on Facebook and on Instagram. One more time, thank you so much, everybody, and I look forward to reading about your fish of a lifetime.